What do I think? I think vertical axis wind turbines, they're sexy. I mean, I like the way they look, who doesn't? I mean, they're, they're very neat, very futuristic, and you know, they're cool, and supposedly they don't kill birds. So, um, you know, in the past I've made some videos that kind of, you know, seem like I'm running down these vertical axis wind turbines, but in all reality, you know, I don't have anything against them. It's just that if you want something that is peak performance, you know, I mean, the hot I mean they, they've both been around for about an equal amount of time you know let's be fair about this but you know the horizontal axis wind turbine seems to have pulled out in front of the race you know ahead in the race and you know I don't know there's some people have even had some conspiracy theories as to why that is you know because the energy companies don't want to you know unleash this you know this device that'll revolutionize the world and, and shut down energy you know needs because we'll be making so much power with these things and um, you know, honestly, I don't know. You know, I've never owned a, a vertical axis wind turbine. So, you know, honestly, I can't even really say. I think there's somebody be somebody out there with a really successful one. And in fact, I urge you to check out uh, Engineering with Rosie. She's got a pretty good breakdown of these things on her channel. And, and I watched this particular video several times and she talks about the differences between them. She goes a lot more scientific than I'm able to do. Um, she uses, you know, all kinds of cool uh, mathematics and everything to kind of explain it. You know, Hugh Pigeot's got a blog out there. Um, you might want to check out Hugh Pigeot's blog on it. He's, you know, he's been around for 40 years, you know, he's, so he's basically the father of the early, you know, the, the, the home build generators, you know, I mean, he was, he's been doing this longer than probably anybody, you know, the home, the home built varieties. And, you know, he has this question and answer stuff down below his blog. And I mean, people are just keep bringing up these, you know, ideas about the the vots over and over again and, and he's trying to like steer him away he's saying you know look i've been at this for 40 years and i haven't seen a good one yet and break the wrist and walk away break the wrist walk away Jeez. and uh and so you know if you want to go for it go for it i'm not against him i'm you know i'm not a hater but you know i'm just telling you what i think is is good and what's not and you know and that's kind of my position too you know, I, you know, I mean, if people like the way they look, if it's, if it, if it's beautiful or whatever, if they think it's munching up less birds, you know, have at it. I've got a wind turbine has been sitting outside. I mean, I've had wind, wind turbines in one form or another for, for at least 12 years. And, and I can tell you, I don't even think I've ever seen a bird get munched up by one. In fact, I saw two hummingbirds one time while my big 10 footer was spinning around. They were sitting there seemingly having a fight. They were chasing each other through the blades. And, uh, so uh but no i've never seen anything hit i know i've hit a lot of car you know birds with my car um i mean probably maybe one or two a month you know and but none with my wind turbine so far so what's killing the most birds out there probably cars so i guess we got to get rid of our cars now but uh but no seriously you know vertical axis wind turbines uh, you know i um people in the comments have told me well we've seen them on on highways you know i mean and that makes sense okay so you got a vertical wind turbine in the middle of a highway and you got cars going this way and you got cars going this way right and those little puffs of winds are going to spin the thing and capture the energy for coming off of the cars and um you know great idea you know it, it looks good on the road anyways i mean somebody's thinking i wonder what the numbers are actually on those things because you know, a little puff of wind is not going to generate much energy, you know, for very long, a little pulse of power, perhaps, but that's about it. And, and as we know, you know, anybody that has a wind generator, you know, a hot or a vot, they know that they need consistent, strong winds to generate any kind of usable power, you know, you know, where most of my power comes from. I mean, I've been off grid for, for 12 years or 12 years plus, and most of my power comes from my solar panels, to be quite honest. And, and I probably generate 95% of my power. And so the question is, well, why would you, why would you have a wind generator if you're creating all this power with your, with your uh, solar panels? You know, what's, what's the point? Well, that 5% of power that I do get from my wind generator comes at just the right time, it seems. You know, when the, the clouds are dark and I haven't had sun for a while, that's when it seems to work. And it seems to kick in and kind of make up that deficiency during that point of time where I would you know ordinarily have to run a generator and so um, and I've actually gone through some of the math where where I've uh, where I figured out how much power that actually you know how much gas and generator time that actually saves me because I do have to supplement a little bit of my power with the generator and so uh, you know so I mean that's about it I mean what can I say I mean you know these things they're they're uh they're neat um they, they got some great shapes to them 
And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure they work for some situations. You know, I still don't know why people are putting these on their rooftops. Don't do that. You know, you're going to find out real quick. You know, that hum of that alternator that you can't ever hear ever. All of a sudden you put that on your roof and that thing starts to spin. You're going to hear that hum, you know, and it'll drive you nuts. It drives me nuts. You know, I've been to somebody's house that had one of those things and he was complaining about he was going to take that thing down. And, and I had heard that those things did that. But boy, when I walked into this guy's house and, and heard it from myself, it was kind of surprising just how much noise those do make. So, but, uh, but yeah, no, uh, you know, in all honesty, I, I've, I've seen a recent video on YouTube. Um, and so this, this guy, he, he's, um, he's, his, it looks successful to me. I mean, it's generating power for him and he's in a high wind area. He was able to put it up high up on a pole. Um, you know, not the house mounted, you know, operations like some people do, but, um, yeah, I mean, he was having good success. So, I mean, you know, it, it it's like the old adage, you know, something, you know, if you're making something that's better than nothing, right? I mean, as far as energy, but you know, but the reality of it is it, if you're purchasing one of these things, it's not something out of nothing. You paid money for, for the actual wind generator, you know, whether it be a hot or a VOT, or let's say you've built it, you know, yourself and you don't have any cost in it, you know, just, just labor. Well, your labor has got to be worth something, you know? And so, you know, would you rather have a bigger return for your labor or a smaller return for your labor? But, you know, that's up to you guys. And, and honestly, you know, I'm neutral, you know, Hey, if somebody can show me, um, a design that it, you know, is super efficient and works really good and everything. And, and it's actually a bigger bang for the buck than a hot, you know, I'm all over it. And, you know, that's, that's where I'm at with all of this. So, Hey, with that, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Be sure and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and all that happy stuff. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.